Big announcement today. You're going to want to watch. Ginger Runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner, here for another Ginger Runner review. Now, I am going to start right off by saying this is a big review. Not necessarily because of the item that we're reviewing today, but because of the content of the review and a bit of a change. When I started reviewing gear and shoes seven years ago, in fact, two days from now is our seven-year anniversary of the first review uploaded to the Ginger Runner channel, February 11th, 2011, I wanted to be the first honest, unbiased, entertaining, yet educational reviewer of running gear and outdoor gear. I refused to review shoes and gear based off of a PR sheet provided by the brands. So I designed a review format that was super simple, brutally honest, informative, and would ultimately help us consumers. The goal of the reviews was to break down a product's greatnesses and flaws equally, as well as to provide a significantly simple point breakdown that consumers could use to compare one product to the other. Over the years, I found that point system and really any point system to be flawed and inefficient. There are so many facets to running shoes and outdoor gear. How can you possibly compare a trail shoe to a road shoe to a max cushion shoe to a minimal or reduced running shoe to a track shoe? The list goes on and on. So the points automatically make your mind want to compare this shoe to that shoe or this pack to that pack. I realize it doesn't really help as much as it does confuse. You can go back and look at any of my reviews for the last seven years and you'll see people complaining about the points of this shoe, comparing it to the points of this shoe. While they're the same, the shoes are vastly different and not really being able to determine which is better for obvious and clear reasons. I did debate adding a decimal point or changing my point system from being super simple, uh, a 20 point system to a hundred point system. Ultimately, that would just worsen the problem and make all previous reviews completely obsolete, but yet still keeping a point system. It was flawed. That is why today I'm experimenting and I am eliminating the points. I will be expanding my conclusion portion of each review, my opinions on the product, whether I like it, whether you will like it, but we'll get to that later. Ultimately, you and I want to know if a shoe or a product is worth your time and money, if it's worth a look or worth avoiding. That's it, that's basically it. So let's give you exactly that. Granted, we're all different, our feet are completely different, our bodies are different, so while a piece of gear might work for me, it may not work for you, but the end goal is the same. So without the points, I think we'll have a more distilled, simpler look at what a product product is, how it performs, and if the product is good for you and I. So let's try this new experiment, shall we? And let's get on with the review. Let's do this. Today, I am reviewing a product that has actually been out on the market for quite some time. It's a pair of shoes that I've had a lot of fun running in. It's super affordable right now. The price has been knocked down, so I, I'm kind of wanted to jump on this. And the shoe is a pretty tight little package, uh, much like myself. From Adidas, the Pure Boot. <laughs> Pure Boost DPR. Snazzy. While there are no version numbers on this model of shoe, this isn't the first Pure Boost DPR. In fact, the first one I've had for a while and I didn't review, I wanted to save you time. I wouldn't even consider it a running shoe. But this, the Pure Boost DPR upgraded version, is simpler, more dynamic, full of boost midsole, which I love, and geared towards the runner who might want something lighter and faster than their Ultra Boost kicks, but not quite as minimal as the Boston. It's also nice to see that this new version has an insole, because the first version did not. It's super fun, affordable, and I like it a lot, and I still have some problems with it. But we're going to get to all of that in today's review. Here are the things I like and dislike about the Pure Boost DPR. Starting as always with the things that I like, the Boost midsole. I can't get enough of this stuff. Every pair of Adidas shoes with the Boost midsole material that I wear, I love. I feel like it's super cushioned, but yet responsive. It works well when you're trying to get some speed workouts in. It also works really well when you're trying to get in long distance. They have varying degrees of thickness on the, the Boost line. You can go the Ultra Boost, much more thick. It basically comes down from there. This falls kind of in the middle. I've actually been really pleased with the balance of boost in this shoe. It's not super heavy and cumbersome. It's not super light and minimal. It gives you that nice balance right in the middle, which leads me to my next like balance. It's balanced right in that sweet spot between the shoes that are lighter, more minimal racers geared towards runners half my size, but twice my speed and the more plump heavyweight shoes in the ultra boost realm. So yeah, I'm pleased with this and I hope they continue to move forward with it. Comfortable, it's flexible, fairly lightweight, it's under 10 ounces, which I'll take and it's cushioned. It's a nice mix of ingredients that make for a pretty good dinner, all while keeping things simple and not overcomplicating things. The upper is woven, nice and comfortable. You also take that midsole and you add the comfort of the woven upper, which is similar to fly knit, not quite as stretchy, but it's comfortable, breathable, not too abrasive. And finally, looks. Uh, of course, looks are arbitrary to performance, but I gotta give it to Adidas. They are killing the sneakerhead game. There are so many shoes that they put out that I really love the look of. This is no exception. I, I do enjoy the look of these. They work quite well as a casual shoe. In fact, I've worn them quite a lot around town. Easy to slip on, slip off, and work with many an outfit. And I don't think any of us can deny the fact that when you put on a pair of shoes that you do feel good in and you feel like they look good, you lace them up, it helps your run. 
It really does. Ah, okay. So that's it for likes. There are a couple of dislikes. Uh, let's get to those. The tongue. The tongue on this shoe is narrow, it's long, and it's only sewn in at one point down here along the bottom. That means that this tongue goes all over the place. And no matter how often I try to reposition it, it will always show the socks underneath because the tongue begins to fold over itself under its uh, it's just a problem the tongue is an issue and when you're trying to get those laces tight if you don't have a bit of tongue between your foot and the shoe it can add to the discomfort that to me is a major design fail in addition to lacing there's only five eyelets here along the upper on both sides you're not really going to be able to get that heel lock because the laces are super short i find myself tying the knots micro size which is one of my biggest pet peeves with the running shoe like when the laces are too long or the laces are too short it's like did they even bother putting the shoes on so the laces are short there's not enough eye holes to really get a good lock the tongue is thin and finally what i'm gonna call the pit of despair by having a midsole layer that is flared wide here along the midfoot I, while i do appreciate the width there it's comfortable in my foot these shoes are by no means narrow which i like you have that tapered trapezoidal look of a midsole layer right underneath the midfoot your foot has the sensation that it's sinking in the middle of the foot while the outside begins to wrap up around your foot it's an interesting sensation it's not super pleasant while you're in the midst of a run you probably will forget it and won't really bug you but i'm constantly thinking about it and i felt it in this the ultra boost i've always known adidas to have this extra flair and sometimes with the boost material it feels like your foot will sink in a little bit but that is it for my likes and dislikes so what is my conclusion on the pure boost dpr i like this shoe i run it in a lot I enjoy all my runs in it, and I wear it a ton casually. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down into five simple categories. First of all, build quality. How are the materials? How is everything built up? I'm pleased with the shoe. It's actually holding up quite well. I like that mesh upper. I like the boost midsole. The tongue and the lacing needs work. Be prepared for the external heel counter there. I didn't have much of an issue with it, but you will definitely notice it on first wear. Comfort. Boost is plush. It's responsive. It's soft. I love it. It's comfortable. Fit. Now prepare for a tighter heel, wider forefoot, and the lacing system that will either drive you crazy or work for you. For me, it drove me crazy. Price, $89 right now. Sometimes less depending on where you find it, but this color version right now running warehouse, 89 bucks, which I think is a damn good deal. As with all the shoes I review, I have links in the description with more information. You can go check those out. And finally, looks. I've already talked about it. I think looks is a plus in this shoe and for most of Adidas' shoes. In fact, I like the looks of this one so much I also have another version. I just, I like them. So bottom line, is the Pure Boost DPR a buy, a try, or a why? If you're looking for a go long or short distance kick with decent flair and style, I'm going to give this a solid buy, especially at the price point of well under a hundred bucks. They supposedly have a new version coming soon, which will be priced at $150. Ugh. So I'd say snag it while you can. And so that, my friends, is it for my review of the Adidas Pure Boost DPR. What'd you guys think? Were you able to comprehend any of my words? I'll tell you, it feels weird as a first time to not give you points on a shoe, but I didn't even bother with them. I think by telling you the likes and dislikes, a conclusion about the shoe, and whether or not you should buy a try or what, I think that pretty much sums it up. Ultimately, I want your experience to be simplified. You can go into a running store confidently knowing that you're going to try this, buy that, take this back, burn that one to hell. So I hope as both a viewer and a consumer, you were able to pull the information that you needed out of this review and future reviews. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the new style. If you're totally cool with it, small, it's minor. It's not going to change your lives, but it might change mine. <sighs> Reminder, there are links in the description for more information on the Pure Boost DPR. Don't forget, if you like this review, to like and favorite and subscribe to the channel, guys. We do a lot more than reviews here. You're not going to want to miss some of the upcoming stuff we have and including social media links. Look at that. At. Hey! And finally, if you want to help keep the lights on and the mics hot and want to get some cool behind the scenes content as well, you can go to patreon.com slash the ginger runner. Lots of stuff happening over there and an incredible community of people. That's it, my friends. I hope you're getting out there training hard, racing harder, and partying the hardest. I know I am. I love this job. Seven years. Wow. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon, guys. Thank you. Subscribe. Peace. Bye!